We Like Dota is brought to you by the support of our generous patrons. Find out how to support the show, visit welikedota.com and follow the links to the Patreon. We Like Dota, episode number 55, starts now. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to We Like Dota, the, the Internet's casual Dota 2 podcast. I'm Brian Sabone Yinger, as I stumble over my words. And I'm joined this evening by Ben Yadnep Day. Hello, Ben. Hello, Brian. How are you doing this uh, this cheery evening? You know, I'm, I'm going to say that I'm doing roughly 75% pretty good. 75% pretty good. Okay, yeah. I'll take that. That's probably my assessment on New Bloom as well. It's like mm. 75%. Yeah. Pretty good. I think that's fair. Uh, ben, also joining us this evening, is senior executive producer. Self-proclaimed. Cheeks of flapping. Hello. Hello. Self-proclaimed nothing. It's on my paychecks. It is on your paychecks. You're right. I write on it in the, that little. On the snack-sized bag of Cheetos I get, it says each month it's mailed to senior executive producer. Well, I was. Cheeks I, of flapping. Yeah. I was going to say I, I put it in that little memo section on the checks. On the Cheetos? That nobody uses. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No but, one ever uses I don't know why they don't use that. But then I was like, why am I writing checks still? I don't know. I don't know. Why are you writing memos? I don't know. All right. Gentlemen, let's uh let's get into the show, as we always do. And we're gonna start with Who'd you play? Who'd you play? Did you click the button. <laughs> Oh, look at it go! Look at it go! Look at it go! Look at it go! Look at it go. <laughs> oh, yeah! yeah. 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 I really got to figure out something else for playing back this I think files. if you just clicked correctly, it's the best strategy. All of a sudden, all of our losses in Dota make so much more sense. <laughs> right, it's the I misclicks. Can't, I can't click on anything. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, Cheeks, we're going to start with you. Who'd you play this week? Well, I played a little bit of Core uh, Tide Hunter in a couple games, mm-hmm. and I played some uh, Core Ogre Magi and sort of support Ogre Magi, and did some uh, Keeper of the Light yesterday, which was pretty fun. I haven't done that in a while. Coddle and of the Light. I like it light. because, yeah, I like all the voice acting because he sounds like a confused old man, and that that makes me very pleased. More or that's less how confused. I feel when I play Dota. <laughs> right. More or less <laughs> confused than Gyrocopter. Uh, uh, more, I think. He's okay. always like, Whoa. he's always like, you know, losing his thoughts in the middle of his words, which is what I do too. That's kind of funny. And then, uh, I was very pleased that we got to do another, uh, color based, color coded team draft. Yeah. Uh, on one of our try hard nights, which was pretty good. It was, uh, what was the, the lineup? Here's the lineup. So this is the green team. We had a, a Necrophos mid, a Tide Hunter off lane. We had a Wind Ranger safe lane, Pugna safe lane, and then another Venomancer off lane. Can I be honest? I had no idea we were doing a color based draft until now. It was color based. I'm well, telling I, you, this whole game's color coded. Yeah. The color coded match so, was an hour and 20 minutes long. That yeah. was a long it was, match. It was pretty long. Yeah. It, it was a really, really long. I don't even know why we won because we were against like a pretty carry heavy team. Because they were bad. They were worse than we were, I think, if so, I recall. There we go. So that match, we were up against a Brewmaster, a Night Stalker, a Winter Wyvern, a Earthshaker, and a Ricky, or Richard, as we lovingly refer to him as. <laughs> and as Cheek said, we were Necrophos, Tidehunter, Wind Ranger, Pugna, and Venomancer. And uh, we had no right winning that match. We should not have won, no. But we did. But we, we did. Have. Yeah. And I even, well, yeah, well, I'll give my impressions once we get to, to my section. But who else did you play this week, Cheeks? Is, is, uh, you got anything else for us? Well, that was pretty much it other than my delightful little stint as Keeper of the Light. Yeah. I did manage to get an item to drop, too. It was like one sort of gauntlet. It was kind of annoying because the guy who disconnected from the other team got like a full set. And I was like, oh, where's dang. the justice in that? You got a single item. 
Because I was under the impression it was item. sets that drop, but you got a single item. No, no, I got a single right. item. Just a little pugna armlet. I'm not even sure if it goes on both arms. <laughs> Oh, great. The only drops you get now <laughs> yes. are we're going back to the previous system, which was Pudge and Pugna stuff. You're complaining. Until Everything the end of time. Is new again. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, boy. Yeah. There you go. Pretty, okay. Pretty salty, Brian. Pretty salty. PJ Salt <laughs> over here. Uh, okay. Thanks, Cheeks. Uh, ben, what did, what did you play this week? Well, I played, I, I think I might have been Tidehunter in that one match. So I did play some matches as Tidehunter. Um, also played some matches as Medusa when a carry was needed and then i tried out our new friend winter wyvern and did a little bit of that i know you play a lot of medusa how's that been working out not particularly well and not particularly poorly it's just kind of okay well I, the here's my challenge right now brian i keep bouncing back between support carry support carry and i just don't have a good dota identity right now mm. and i think that's where i'm at i think that's i'm not good enough to bounce back and forth between roles and feel like i still am capable of doing anything so. yeah so that's where i'm at but did that and then uh, cheeks of flapping and i cheeks is trying to teach me how to play hearthstone the uh, hit card game by blizzard entertainment and yes yeah and i'm failing at that miserably well you were you and cheeks were playing your match and you started i got really excited you because s- you I, started whining like crazy in, in our little chat well, i we started <laughs> so i started to do some research because i i knew i was pretty bad at the game and, and i'd played cheeks before and he just totally destroyed me so i'm like i'm gonna look up how to make a good deck yeah and i did that without spending any money because i'm cheap yeah. and so i did that and i came out guns blazing got this huge lead in terms of you know whatever whatever you call the creeps or enemies or what do you call those things that go i out believe there? we uh, call that like board control i had a lot of board, board control. control i had a lot of yes. stuff on yes, the board board control and so yes. I'm ready. I've got like, oh, I'm going to take out 10 points of his health. It's going to be fantastic. And I don't even know what happened. I just, all, everything I ever put out there died. And then I died. <laughs> and I think it was yeah. like, I think he had like 35 health points. And I only think you start with 30. Well, and I had like have negative 30. 10. You can't have more than fair, 30. I think, I think I had 28. I think I had 28. Okay, I think so you, you had 28 and I had negative 10 or something when it was all yes, sudden. But done. you're making me sound a lot like I'm a lot better at Hearthstone than I actually am. No, you, I'm really but I'm accurately good. presenting how much better than than I am at Hearthstone you are. This sounds like a soul-crushing experience. It was It was a little bit, yeah. Yeah. I, I thought I would do better than I did. Do you have like all of the normal, like all of the basic starter cards unlocked? I don't know. Okay. I have no idea. You're probably pretty close. You're probably probably pretty, close. pretty close. I think and I do know, for the I class do. I was trying to play. I'm kind of in a similar yeah. space. I've bought a couple of card packs, and I've tried building some decks around my better cards, but I don't think I have any better cards. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it, it felt like if you went to a Magic the Gathering tournament and you ended up against a pro, that's how it was playing against Cheeks. And I know he's not probably very good at the game, but that's how it Whoa, felt to me. Okay. No, he just admitted. He's like, I'm not yeah. a pro. I'm not no, that I'm, great. I'm not good. But I'm just saying that's how Dang. bad I felt, as I felt like I was at a professional tournament. Yeah. Getting okay. destroyed. Yeah. So. Right. Well, there you have well, it. Well, you know, I mean, we all we all kind of hate ourselves a little bit, and that's why we play Dota. So that's probably right. why we play Hearthstone, Yeah, too. I just wish that I would win something when I lost. You know? That's the only thing. You have to win to get more cards. Well, there's, no, there's challenges that you can do that you don't Are there some win. that don't involve winning? Yeah, there's some okay. like I just so need to find damage. those challenges then. That's not what I've been yeah. seeing. Okay. Just keep going. I'll man. take your word I'll for it. I'll teach you how to win. It'll be great. Alrighty. There you have it. I real quick, the my only complaint is I wish you could do arena mode. Like we could mm-hmm. yeah. duel each other in arena mode, like to practice it. There's some oh, there's fun. some talk about that. I would love that. But you can do that you can do that for fun. You can go and uh do like pretend like you're starting to make a deck and then just exit out and then it'll ask you if you want to fill it in all with randomly cards and so you can just get all random cards and then do it have a friend do that too and then meet up for a all random draft i guess that's true that's a thing you could do yeah that's a little different but yeah it's similar yeah yeah okay who'd you play in the hit game dota in the hit game dota 2 my week uh my week was fun i played some Bristleback and some Vengeful Spirit and some Silencer. And I I really like Bristleback. I, we, I like when you play Bristleback for the most part. I think it's fun. Yeah, I played I played with a uh, friend of the show, uh, Josh. And Cheeks, I believe you were captain. We were playing with Ike. 
and a random fourth person where we did Witch Doctor, Ogre, Spectre, Bristleback, and Storm Spirit. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, Bristleback's just a fun one. Did we put uh, Bristleback in this? No, we didn't go safe lane with him. I went off lane with him. No, we went off lane with him. Yeah. Uh, but I also played some Wind Ranger in the uh, aforementioned green draft. And I haven't played Wind Ranger probably in about a year since I had started playing Dota. I really liked her in the core position. It was really fun. Because Cheeks, you would blink in, do like a Ravage, and then I could do like a follow-up Shackle Shot. And Mm -hmm. it was great. It worked out well. And I don't know why I did not do this, but I did not pick up Ag Scepter on Wind Ranger. That's like almost embarrassing. Well, is that that's a like thing? A, that, I guess I didn't even know that's a thing now. Because if you're doing a carry, that that impacts her ultimate, correct? Oh, yeah. Her, yeah, it, okay. Because her ultimate does damage reduction for the focus fire. Oh, yeah. And with the Ag Scepter, it reduces it to zero damage reduction. And the, it even more so brings the cooldown down to like either 13 or 14 seconds. So you're essentially eliminating all armor and armor equivalent type things, right? Is that what you mean by damage no, reduction? No, it's not that. It because you're firing so fast, mm-hmm. it reduces the damage done on your right click with the focus. Fire. So do you think you I could see. have reduced okay. our game time for that game for about like by about like 25 minutes by buying it? If you, if you played correctly, it's, it's possible. very possible. Yeah. 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 But as soon as you bought it, the enemy's ancient would just explode. And yeah, sure. Well, because the ancient was sitting there for about 15 <laughs> minutes with about 500 health. If it's I recall. True. Yeah. yeah, that's true. But I ended the game with a BKB, a four staff, a scythe of vice. Mjolnir and a Sanj, Sanj and Yasha. And yeah, that's pretty good. It was okay. It was fun. I had it's a good time bad. with her. So she was a terror in lane. I was against a Ricky and an Earthshaker. And okay. Was, the harass was real. It was nice. That sounds nice. Yeah. Uh, and I've also been playing a lot of Star Wars The Old Republic. You have, yeah. yeah. How's, how is that Why? game right now? That game Why? is okay. it's so good. I love it. Did is, is it, it is how's the free to play model? Though, right? Is the free to play well, model okay? The free to play model is great because you can do all of the storylines for every character all the way up to whatever it is, but until the you have to start buying expansion packs. Okay, but that's all free. Can you unlock expansion packs without buying them? No, you have to pay for expansion okay. packs. Uh, but there's only two right now, I believe. Okay, um, of which I have neither, and. Do they cap dungeons or any or inventory or anything like that? Uh, I think there is some of that with the flashpoints, but I'm not like up to the highest level yet, so I'm not doing a ton of flashpoints. Okay. Um, but yeah, my song might change a little bit once. once yeah, I you get let to me. You, you keep with it and you let me know. I'll let you grind away yeah. at hours and into a game. But what's really cool to... is a lot of the upgrades, like a lot of the free to play unlocks that you can buy. You can unlock it for your for all the characters on one server. Right. Okay. Which is really nice. That is nice. So there's that. And a lot of those you can buy with credits on the auction house. Yeah. I actually paid to play that yeah. game for a little while and it was enjoyable. Yeah. And then I just kept wishing it was a single player game instead of an MMO. Right. I think that's what I kept thinking. Yeah. They've made does a lot it of feel real MMO y. It does, yeah. They I think uh they just released that they have uh, a million unique players. Which mm-hmm. for being a non World of Warcraft MMO, that's pretty good. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, you go to the capital cities and they feel bustling and there's people there. In some of the lower level content, there's not as many people. But I mean, I signed up to do a dungeon. I caused us to have to wait about 15 minutes to start a match because I was doing a dungeon. You did. Yeah, I got yeah. quite annoyed. And then the service crashed in between yeah. you finishing the dungeon and starting the dungeon. So that was fun. So it was fine. It was good. So I liked it. And if you want to give it a try, I'll put my... Uh, I'll put my server info out there, and you guys can come and join me. Or hack his account and sell his gold, one or the other. You can do that, too. Just put me out of my misery. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Cheeks, we're going to see you at the the, uh, bottom of the show. How's that sound? That sounds just fine by me. We're going to bid you adieu, and we're going to move on to the news. Adios, Cheeks. (laughs) (laughs) To read the future, I need entry. All right, Ben, so I don't know if you heard, but there's some news this week. Well, yeah, I have heard, and I'm 75% excited about it. Yes. Yeah. So obviously we have New Bloom, 
but we have a couple other things we're going to talk about before we get to New Bloom. Okay, let's let's hold the best for last, right? Yeah, that's okay. right. So the Dota Asia Championships wrapped up. They had the finals with Evil Geniuses versus, versus Vici Gaming. If you haven't heard, EG beat them 3-0. They destroyed them. In the finals. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was... It was kind of crazy. It's a it was a pretty good showing from EG, I think. So and not so yeah. much for VG. So I'm not sure. Yeah, I was a little surprised. I thought I thought it would be closer. Yeah. I also thought Team Secret would probably still be there at this point, and they weren't. So I don't know. Uh, EG's got a really good young, talented uh, mid. What's his name? Sir Sumail. Sumail. Yeah. Sumail. So he seems like he's really. Uh, he had, a, I think, one game where he fed maybe three or four kills on a Storm Spirit early, and he just kind of stuck with it and came back and was pretty successful. You wouldn't have so. thought that he had such a rough early game. Right. Not the way it finished. Yeah. So, And I'm not sure if it was that he fed kills early or that they just kept ganking him over and over, and there wasn't a ton he could do about yeah, it. Yeah, maybe feeding's not the right terminology for it, but he he didn't crash under pressure. It didn't seem like it made yeah. him, made him kind of collapse, which you can see sometimes for people right. and... Yeah, I mean, EG looks pretty strong. I think uh, it's going to be interesting. We're getting closer and closer to, to TI, and I think these big tournaments like this really start to give us some glimpses at who might be showing up at that big tournament, and EG looks pretty solid. Yeah, that's, uh, I, you're definitely seeing the teams that are going to get invites, direct invites to TI here. In VG Gaming, they actually just recently announced that, um, well, Ice 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 didn't ask me anything on Reddit, and he confirmed that Black was leaving the team. Right, that has been confirmed. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and I I think they said it wasn't due to his play style or performance, but it was more so due to the fact that he's German, and they are it was all communication Easterners. issues. Yeah, yeah. They, they said that was just something they couldn't quite work through with the communication issues. Which makes so. sense if everyone on your ch- team are native Chinese speakers, and he's maybe necessarily not, or they're trying to communicate in English or whatever language. If you're not speaking in your native language, it's just it's just going to be tough. Yeah, I think without a doubt. I think we've even found, you know, if you try to play a game without, you know, team speak or vote voice chat versus playing a game with it, it makes a huge difference in how effective you are as a team. Yeah. And so I think communication is very important and any delay in that's just if you have any chance at winning the biggest tournament out there, which is TI still at the moment, I think that's an advantage you can't give up. And I think that that's what they figured yeah. out with that. So I, I'm sure I don't know if Black landed anywhere yet. But I think he will obviously land with another team because I don't think talent is the issue. So, yeah, I think I saw some stats. He had some of the best stats out of the entire tournament as far as like game impact and gold and XP per minute and all that good stuff. So, a lot of people kind of view, seemingly have been viewing the Dota Asia Championships as like a half step to the TI or like a mini TI in certain ways, and I think the event has definitely proven to be that and. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to it, forward to it next year. For sure. Yeah, I mean, it was a, seems like a really good event with some really good play, and it, it had a nice pace to it. I think I've complained nice sometimes pace. about the pacing yeah. of some other events. This one seemed to go uh, pretty fast and be pretty exciting, and yeah, we were seeing some team moves just coming out of mm-hmm. it too. So yeah, and real quick before we move on, uh, I would definitely recommend checking out some of the interviews that Beyond the Summit did with some of the players. And so I already did a podcast about the Dota Asia Championships about what it was like from him, his perspective and being over in China. And it's just... Yeah, it's it sounds pretty, interesting. It's yeah. really interesting, yeah. Hmm. So hmm. go check that out. Uh, ben, in other news, uh, Funic is leaving Na'Vi, one of the powerhouse teams. Yeah, that's pretty big news. And Dota I think, uh, did, did you did I send a quote out for him that he put on Na'Vi's website? Is that worth reading? Yeah, I'll read through this. Sure. So Because it wasn't it wasn't drama. You're always hoping for drama. It doesn't seem like that was the scenario here. It right. seems like he's just looking for greener pastures. But this yeah. was directly from Na'Vi's website. So what is it that he said? Okay, Funnick says, Hello, dear fans. I have a sad news for you today. And I'm going to read this in broken English as it was written. That's That seems insensitive. Yeah. I've decided to leave our friendly family, which took me two years ago. This was a tough decision. My priorities have changed by now. I might regret this decision in future. However, I want to go my own way and to write a new page in my life. I'm very grateful to the organization, all the guys with whom I played and spent almost all my time. I experienced many positive emotions and negative emotions too, but there were more positive emotions after all. Smiley face. I wish much success and good luck to everyone. Once again, thanks a lot for the time we spent together. Additionally, I want to thank all the devoted fans 
who believed in us even at the hardest times. We appreciate, we appreciate it and we respect that much. Remember it. As concerns my further plans, I am going to be inactive for some time and resolve my own problems. Goodbye. See you soon. Yeah. So, I mean, it sounds like he's not out of the Dota scene and it sounds like he doesn't really have any hard feelings here. Yeah. Is this a good thing for Navi? You, you follow the scene a little bit better. Is it is it a good thing for Navi and is it a good thing for Funic? Like, is this the best decision for everybody type of scenario? Uh, I don't know about that. Funic's a really good player. Uh, he he's made some really great matches happen over the past couple of years. Uh, so yeah, I don't. I I think it's worth. Well, yeah. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't know how I feel about it, Ben. It could go either way. Of I course. guess it's it's yet to be determined. Yet based to be on determined. How this all goes, right. huh? Okay. I'm not sure if it's good or bad or. So for, my, na- for now, it's a thing. Right. My initial reaction is it's not good for Navi, because Funic's a really good player and they've just been trying to find their groove and trying to make stuff happen. They actually had a pretty decent showing at at the DAC, which was nice to see. Yeah. They, they did. They, they did. They. I mean, better than I think I would have anticipated and better than yeah. they've been playing lately, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Which is kind of, a, yeah, it's kind of a shame because in some regards, I get this sense that teams feel like they're not successful unless they're winning, which I think to some degree that is good. But also, like, I feel like if you're getting second place at the Dota Asia Championships, you're successful, at least to me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think so too. I, I don't think that's something to be too upset about, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see how Navi kind of pulls together. We'll see what happens here with VG. Um, I, I thought we were going to kind of be done with these big moves, but apparently not. Right. So, yeah. Anyway, let's move on to the uh, big news of the week here, Ben. New Bloom Festival. The New Bloom Festival. So this is our big patch of, I don't know, the winter slash springtime. I don't know, probably spring. Yeah, so this was a kind of a big event last year was the New Bloom Festival, and this year is the year of the Ram, correct? Sure. Okay. Last yeah, we'll year go with it that. Was year... Well, it's the Year Beast thing, is that? Yeah, but it's it surrounds like last year they were I forget what animal it was, but this year like a lot of the sets are based around Rams. Like a lot of the items. I'll and take stuff. your word for it. I, I did not notice the thematic. It's a Chinese new, it's a Chinese New Year's. No, day. I know that, yeah. but I didn't okay. I'm not familiar with what it is this year. So yeah. yeah. Well I don't think we've seen the item sets for it yet, have we? They're not, they're, they're not they're not available. they've teased some of them in some of the announcements, okay. but they're not actually available to purchase yet as of the last I checked, which was earlier today. Okay. So obviously kind of the one of the big things in regards to this uh this event is the year beast event, which according to the Dota 2.com website, the year beast brawl, it's, it's the year beast brawl, Ben. Okay. Like brawl. smash brothers. Yes. Except it, not is like a normal match of all pick Dota, except that each team now has a powerful helper, their very own year beast. Every five minutes during the battle, the year beast will appear charging down the lanes toward the opposing team. Use your ability points to manipulate and modify your year beast, helping it destroy the enemy's ancient. Ability points are gained in numerous ways throughout the New Bloom Festival. So like most special events, this produced complete and utter apathy in my life. Yeah. But <clears throat> some people have had some very emotional reactions to this. Um, some very strong reactions. Some very strong reactions because people are calling this a pay-to-win mode, which... You know, I haven't tried the mode because I've been avoiding it because I just frankly don't care that much about it. But I guess apparently these abilities and stuff, those points that you can buy, either Mm -hmm. buy them outright or get them from um, buying the Crystal Maiden Arcana, which we'll talk about later, or um, get them or earn them by having a Crystal Maiden on your team or playing this Year Beast event. Yeah. Those points can be used to upgrade these spawning Year Beast things that just happen to spawn during these, these special events. And therefore, they help you win games and get get more items, basically. Yeah. So. And some people were really upset because they were calling it pay to win and all that. And I think I don't think that's necessarily unfounded, but at the same time, I think it's flat out true. Well, yeah. And I think to a certain degree, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I don't really care. Yeah. But it's it is true. I think. I think if 
I think if like the core game of Dota 2 was pay to win, which it definitely most absolutely clearly is not, I would be upset. But with this dumb sidebar mini game version of Dota, I, I don't care. Here's the only thing that irritates me about it. I know exactly what you're talking is, about. Is the fact that during this 10 to... And did they tame, change the time frame? Is it more than 10 minutes? I thought somebody said it changed to like 20 minutes. But it, at least initially, it was a 10 minute time frame when this event is running. And during that 10 minute time frame, you cannot queue for normal matches. Only the year beast brawl. Which are essentially normal matches with a pay to win component. Yeah. And so that's irritating. Yeah. I want to have a choice in the matter. That's yeah. I actually really hate that. I don't know why they would do that. I I don't know, but yeah. it's a thing and it's, that's an irritating thing. Yeah. I can get over it, but I, I cause I even ranked, like you can't even do ranked. You can only do, can you not do ranked? Beast Are you sure about that? Well, yeah, I think you can, but it, it's with the year beast in there. I, I doubt think. that. I don't think so. I think you can okay. still do ranked. Okay. Yeah. You're probably right. That would be crazy. That would be really crazy. If so, then I'm even more pissed off about it, but we'll have to do further, further research. Yeah. Or just continue to have but the, apathetic feelings about it. But this whole window opens up randomly throughout the day. And then they warn you ahead of time. The, pr- the problem is if you, if you don't time your matches or your wins, right. And you get out of a match all of a sudden, you have to wait 10 minutes to get into another match that's like a normal match. Yeah. That's kind of irritating. Well, they give you a warning, but it's not a huge warning, right? Like, it's only like well, an no, hour but it, or something, right? But if you know it's... But still, I guess yeah. regardless of how much warning they give you, you have to manipulate your life a little bit around this event to avoid the event. Yeah. And it's just... it's just it's Honestly, in the grand scheme of things, it's an inconvenience, but come on. Yeah. let's Let's be a little better next time. Yeah, just give us the ability to do that if we want to. Right. And I guess it's a better scenario than some people didn't like the the PA event, right, going into the matches. Yeah. And that was just kind of built in with the Arcana. So I guess all things considered, this is probably a step up yeah. from that because at least I don't have to participate. I haven't participated in the event. And I've yeah. probably played 10 matches since the patch has gone live. So Yeah. I haven't tried the Year Beast Brawl yet. But you usually like these things. So what's let me ask yeah. you this. What's keeping you away from this? Is it the pay to win component? Is it um, like, are you planning to play this? I am planning to play it. I'm okay. going to give it a try. See how that goes. Um, but yeah, I don't really know. I'm just not particularly drawn to her. I had fun. I had fun with the PA event. I thought I had fun with that one. Yeah. And that actually was one of my more favorite events. I think I've yeah. played. It added a tension level to the yeah. game a little bit. I liked the Wraith Knight. Wraith Knight one a lot. That was the one that I had the most fun with. I hated that one. But that was like kind of tower defensey and mm-hmm. I had a fun I had a fun time with that one. Like the the Year Beast event last year, I hated that one. It was not fun. Where you it was like a raid boss kind of type yeah, setup. Yeah, it was just kind of okay. Yeah. yeah I did you. not like it. In general, I'm not really into the special events, Yeah, but people must like them, right? I mean, I guess, yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. I guess I haven't really heard anybody say, "Man, this is awesome." So I guess if you yeah. li- if you have really liked it, hop on our Reddit page, tell us why you really really like it, and then we'll kind of if if we get a lot of feedback, we'll we'll stand corrected on that one. But yeah, so there's Year Beast Brawl aside, there's a couple of other things that was also that were also added. Yeah, so that's and, part of the twenty five percent I didn't like. Yeah. So. To be to be clear, the rest of everything we're going to talk about, I've loved everything else. I'm I'm almost there. There's okay. like that's probably twenty percent of what I didn't like, and then there's a little <laughs> bit of a five percent nugget left. Yeah, that that we'll have to talk about. We're starting a new segment today with uh, Yadnep called uh, Math with Ben. Called percentages. Yeah. Yes. So the new Bloom map, Ben. Uh, have you played on the new themed map? Okay, so this is actually I'm, I'm going to stand corrected. This is one oh. percent of what I don't like. I'm not I'm not overly impressed. Really, it's just kind of okay. Yeah, I liked I liked last year the just the fireworks more more fireworky and it doesn't seem as decorated as it was. No, last year. it just seems kind of bland comparatively. And I know people complained about it, and that's probably why. But I, I like my fun holiday themed ma- yeah. maps. I think that's that's good. Yeah, I understand that you can't please everyone, and that's fine. But I really liked how I love the art style of last year's New Blue. Oh, it was great! Yeah, it had all the like cool like Eastern flourishes and fireworks. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the fireworks that teared you to or terrified you to death whenever you. Oh, it was to great! Match. You thought something was happening. Yeah, when the ancients die, it still explodes in a shower of uh, ram-shaped fireworks, which is nice. Which is kind of neat. Last year, what was it? Last year, it was like the year of the donkey, or 
The year of the bird, or it was I, the year of a slightly more fun Dota map. Yeah, that's for sure. Or the year of the cat, or something like that. I don't think any of those animals sound correct. I think it was the year of the. It was the horse. I think it was the horse. We can go with that. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I mean, what's a ram? It's just a horse with horns on it. <laughs> Roughly. Right. I suppose. <laughs> yeah. So you don't like the new map? Uh, I'm disappointed. I'm not going to say I don't like it. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm going to put that in my one percent dislike. I'm going to say. I am. I'm disappointed. I, I feel like they, they've done better with some of the maps mm-hmm. before. I like last year's better, and yeah, I think they caved in too much to the complaints. I can't. You even you can select what map you even play, can't you? You can. So yeah. just mm-hmm. go all out on it, and yeah. then let people who don't want to play it, they don't have to play it. You select it under that menu. I think it's under language. It's under the, like options. Play, yeah, the language options or something. Yeah. Which that's a whole other conversation. There's language preferences, but I get stuck with a bunch of people who do not speak English. Let's let's not open that can of yeah. worms tonight. But <laughs> the issue, you know, just they've got the map options. Just I don't know. It's Use just them. it's it's people. bland. Yeah. yeah, it's just really boring to me. All right. So along with this, there is a couple of balance changes to the meta game. Not yeah. much. Yeah. Not en- a- not enough for Jared to come over here and talk about <laughs> it. Yeah. So the first one, uh, much to Team Noobs Ask Noobs chagrin, Phantom Lancer is now in Captain's mode. I, ha- I haven't seen him played yet, though. Yeah. Which is good. But yeah, he's out there now. So yeah. I guess people could choose him if they want. So he's he's going back to first ban status for us. For no, a- I, not right now, because nobody picks him. But for the longest time, he was first ban for us. Cause we he was. He was really annoying. That like was him. before the rework. And, and now he's still annoying. But I, I think that... I don't know. I, I'm I'm actually surprised nobody's been picking him up. So I don't know if he's hard to play now or what. But I I don't think he's hard to play at all. I think he's quite fun to play. Yeah, we should play him. I, well, I don't know. We'll see if it shakes up anything. I mean, okay. wasn't it just uh, before the rework? Wasn't it? Was it Star Ladder that he was never picked? There was some big tournament yeah. that he never got picked at all. He was in. a very situational pick. Yeah, he was he was not in a good spot. That's why they reworked him. Yeah, we'll see if he's yeah. any better now. So, okay. Uh, Balance changes, Ben. Juggernaut's agility growth reduced from 2.85 to 2.4. So we have a nerf. Um, That's not an insignificant nerf, but it's not a huge nerf. He has been first pick, first ban in the pros, so I think that's probably pretty important. Yeah. Uh, Juggernaut's healing ward mana cost rescaled from 8,100, 120, 140 to 120 125 130 135 so it's costing uh more at all levels except for the fourth level right which is fine i'm okay with that that's 50 more mana at level one which that's pretty significant because he has a fairly small mana pool yeah i mean he it's gonna limit him a little bit for sure yeah juggernaut's blade fury mana cost rescaled from 110 to 120 110 190 so it costs a little bit more at level one, and then it's basically the same or less for the other levels. Okay. Which, that doesn't seem like a huge deal. No, I, I think the bigger ones we already talked about, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Axe also received some nerfs. Axe's Culling Blade kill threshold reduced from 250, 350, 450 to 50, 250, 325, and 400. So it's a slight, There's you have to have slightly less health to get off that ultimate now. Right. Which uh, axe is a pain in the butt. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not thrilled by that. Just because I don't know. I, I'm not. He's the flavor of the month right now. People love to play axe, especially yeah. at our skill level. Although I feel like I'm starting to get a grasp on how to handle him a little bit better. Yeah. How I do think, you How do you handle him? Well, I think you either just kill him flat out. You just put him in a. You, you have to look at lane matchups more. I think that's the problem. Is when we played axe, we're just like going with what we want to do, instead of thinking, well, where is axe and how do we want to handle axe. Yeah, because you can handle him if you can either a kill him, or or b just rotate somebody out who's gonna get hurt by it, or right. essentially just you know if he's gonna waste his time there, you go and you focus somewhere else and you push, or you can yeah. do early push or something. I mean, there's just different ways you can do it. I think before we're just like this is our strategy, we're gonna go with it. Oh my, why is Axe totally ruining <laughs> our safe lane? And we we should have thought that through. I think that's where yeah. we've gone wrong. So. I found that with our team, we do really poorly. The things that we should react to, we do not react to well. And the things that we should not react to, we overreact to. Yeah, we go guns blazing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> Without a doubt. So there's that. Um, well, we have room to grow. 
for sure. Room to grow. Uh, Vengeful Spirit's wave of terror duration reduced from 20 to 15 seconds. So that armor reduction that she gets from her W lasts about five seconds less. It's a pretty big deal. I think, again, she's been one of those heroes that's that's been really popular in the metagame. And I think they wanted to do something she's, to kind of change it so a little bit. Good. I mean, it's yeah. so you saw a lot of her, a lot of Lion during DAC. And I think that made sense. That wave of terror with yeah. the armor reduction is pretty good. Well, her so. with... Ventral Spear with Axe and um, Juggernaut, even. Juggernaut. They call that Team Spin, yeah, if you will. Exactly. Works out really well because they just do so much physical damage. Yeah. And I think I think it's going to change the meta a little bit. Those those two mm-hmm. heroes in particular were so in in those matches that I think they're, they're going to change things up a little bit yeah. for sure. So I think I saw that at DAC, the number of heroes picked was like super high. It was... It was good. There was a good spread. It was like somewhere between 90 and 100. You know what else you saw during DAC? What's that? Crystal Maiden win rate in like the 26, 27 percentage rate. stop, Ben. Yeah, no, you're right, though. You showed this to me, and I was like, look, I can't argue with you. The stats, man. Yeah. The stats are not in her favor. And that was like over 12 games played, I think? No, I think it was at least 15 games. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, 15 or so. They picked picked her enough to realize that picking her was not going to work. Okay. She needs some help, man. I don't think... Well, I don't know. She's a good hero. I still stand by it. I think she's a great hero. <laughs> Wait, how can you stand by that and then realize that she's ineffective at the pro level? You could say she's a good hero at our level. I'll yeah, give you that. I think I'll say that. Okay, yeah. I'll give you that. That's fine. Yeah. She might be bad at the pro level, though. Which She currently is. I think the which stats show it. Yeah. only bodes well for us because Ice Frog tends to balance for the competitive scene. <laughs> right so so we may see some crystal made yeah. and then you know if he gives me something to cheer for i'll be all about it but right now <laughs> she's got problems yeah uh also ben bot matches were made available offline which is great so there you go yeah i noticed that when the servers weren't working so thank you valve yeah. for at least providing me some options to play your game which friday night the servers were a mess they were pretty bad i think I don't want to say it was due to this year beast thing, but but it probably was part it of it. Probably yeah. was, yeah. I think Friday nights tend to be bad in general. Have you have you read uh, Dota Two on Reddit lately? Our Dota Two. No, they are not happy campers right now. Really? Oh, yeah, they are pissed. Are people on Reddit usually happy though? I mean, it seems like that goes with the territory, right? It's, it seems like yeah. It seems Maybe like, that's unfair. I don't know. No, that's definitely fair. It seems like 75 to 80% of the time, there's something that they're pissed off about. And then 20% of the time, uh, they're happy about some pro thing or, you know, whatever. I don't know. Yeah? Yeah. So there's that. Okay, Ben. The next item on the agenda, you did the show notes. All that's listed here is hats with about... 15 exclamation points, and it's in all caps and bold. Well, that's because hats are back, Brian. Yeah, tell me hats what's going on back. here. Well, I, I've played a number of matches. I know you've played a handful of matches as well. There has been some cosmetic item drop in every match I've played. Every single one? Every single match I've played wow. so far. I'm not sure if that's how it always works, Yeah. but it shows me that the statistics of, of probability are saying that there's a probability that some item will drop. Now, granted, it's it's sometimes a crappy item, mm-hmm. but I had a legendary item drop earlier today. I've had an entire you set. You had a legendary item. I did. Is, yeah. that a, is that a purple one? That's one of the purple ones. I had a purple. What'd you get? I got a legendary um, transform ability for Lycan's wolves or something. Oh, get out of here. No, not even kidding. A skin for the wolves or I like think it was for a his skin, ultimate? I think it was the skin for the wolves. I'm not sure. Okay. Oh, I love Lycan. I can't clarify, but... Um, but that's dropped. I've had an entire Wind Ranger set drop. Yeah. And I think I got one other little knickknack. Yeah, that was too. the match where I was playing. And I was like, oh, I, I want a set. And I was like, wait a second. This is yeah, Neb. You know, should they change it to do that? It, that would make sense. What if what if the items that dropped were for the heroes you were playing? Are you co- Ben, you complained for weeks about the lack of hats. I'm just and saying. And you're still complaining. I'm at, you're right. I, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna leave that there. I don't want to ask for any more than I'm getting. Yeah. But they're they're back. There That's are drops. You, you can't. So so just PS. You know, public service announcement for those who haven't been following the patch notes. You cannot sell these items or trade them. But you can gift them. Oh, you can. You gift can them. gift them one time. Okay. So if you have your friends, who like yeah, Brian and I. Yeah, 
I mean, we like heroes. If you want to gift us something, we can. You can gift it to us. Oh, we'll take any and yeah, all. Yeah, we gifts. like hats. Yeah. So, um, so you can do that, and that's nice. And they drop now, which is nice. Yes. And I don't know what else to say. I'm just thrilled. I'm absolutely thrilled that that's the case. Well, they actually made you know on the big gorgeous splash page that they make for for whenever there's a patch. Mm-hmm. You know, they, you got to hand it to Valve. They always do these things with style. Well, they, yeah, and they also had a video that they made for the Year Beast thing. Did you see that? Yeah, that was and, really cool. And there's another comic book that I didn't read. Yes, I love those. Did you read the comic I book? I love the comic book. It gave some personality to Crystal Maiden. Was it nice? It was great. Okay, great. I loved it. I'm glad that you liked it. I didn't read it. Yeah. I like fun. comic books, even. I just okay. wasn't interested in reading that particular comic book at that particular time. Yeah. But anyway, I was going to mention, they made a big point about the improved item drop system on the patch notes. And I didn't believe it at first. Yeah. I, I wanted to see it with my own eyes, and now that I've seen it, I, I think that it's it's real. It's for real. I think that there's a good likelihood that 10% of the time, you might get a drop. That's pretty good. If that's, if yeah. just based on my very small, you know, number of matches I've yeah. played, that's a, that's a good turnaround time from zero times that anything's dropped for me in the last what three or four months it's been a while so well i think the issue that they were having is that you would win items and then you would sell them on the market or i think it was a thing with item prices well because if they're keeping you from selling these or trading these there had to have been something with the economics of the whole thing out of whack. I had my doubts, but I think that this this finally shows that that is the case. Initially, I just thought they were just being, I don't being know, jerks. being kind of greedy, and and it, yeah. they are being greedy, but they're being greedy in a more rational way. Okay, and I think I'm okay with that. So, all right, that's fine. Yeah, they're they're controlling they're controlling prices on the community market, and I think yeah. that's okay. That's not a big deal. Yeah, I think that's fine. It's their market; they can do whatever they want. I still think the trade restrictions on the chests are maybe a little bit extreme, but once that changes, I think I'll be okay with everything. So, the trade restrictions on the chests. When you open something up from a chest, you know, have to you, you have to wait months before oh, you can yeah. sell it. That's yeah. I mean, have they it's the same that, reasoning. Have they changed that to a month? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, maybe, and maybe that's if it is a month. I guess I'll take it back. If it's down to a month, yeah. I'm not too upset about it. Which I think that I'm okay with too, because it's kind of to protect people who spent you know 250 on a chest and yeah the ability to go on the market and just buy it for a dollar or whatever well yeah but but they used to have it where if you bought a chest you had a chance to win like a rare a really rare item which that's what i miss is because that happened to me when i first started playing dota a couple times yeah and i sold those really rare items for like 30 bucks a pop and that was really that was a good feeling because that makes up for the fact that you just spent two fifty on a chest it instead does. of buying it on the market for a dollar. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I think it's probably you're right. All all things considered, it's probably for the best that they have that limit on there. One thing is clear: we're in a better spot item wise than we have been in the past. Oh yeah, so, tenfold. This uh, is a plus. This is in my seventy five percent. Yeah. Positive. We've only got four percent negative stuff left. Thumbs up from us. Thumbs up for sure. And Ben, have you experienced the item recycling system? I haven't all? messed with it yet, but I'm I glad it's not. there. I mean, it makes sense, especially with the changes to not being able to sell the random hats and stuff. Yeah, I think that's can you a can you explain how that works for our uh, you, listening? Audience. I believe that what happens is you you can recycle something like ten items. Yeah, and then I think you get some sort of a gem that allows you to make predictions. That allows you to earn some sort of a chest or item out of that. If you get correct yeah. ones, if you get incorrect ones, you get parts of a future recycled item or something. Yeah. So it's a long process probably to get to some rewards, but I think it's nice that, that there's something there. Yeah, so it kind of works like um, how that assured victory taunt works from the TI4 compendium. Like it goes in that slot where you use that, and if I think you have to get two guesses correct, and then you uh, get I think an it's, item. I think it's three correct and two wrong, oh, if I okay. remember correctly. Yeah. yeah. So there's that. I don't even. I don't know if I'm going to use that or not. I'm. I might just use it for betting purposes. I might just bet those items instead. On, I don't. On you, you can't bet those lounge. items. That's the whole point of the recycling. If you can't trade the items, you can't bet the items. All these items you're winning are unbettable on Dota Two Lounge. Oh right. Yeah, that's true. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, that's the only bad thing. <laughs> that's the only bad thing. I love betting items. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, so, Ben, the Crystal Maiden Arcana was also released. 
we we had no idea who was going to be the hero and i am happy to say that we finally get a support arcana this is great it's mostly great it's you know four percent of it's not so great and that four percent is the fact that crystal maiden is in every stinking game right now well yeah. she's constantly being played and that's a little annoying because you know how i feel about the hero at the i'd moment. rather have her than pa in every single game uh, I totally disagree, but it's okay. But here's the thing. I love the the, the Arcana is... I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's my favorite Arcana they've released yet. Whoa! So, Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, you heard it here first. Yeah, it's really sparkly. I love it. It I has a little great. puppy thing that falls. And I don't even like dogs, but that puppy's yeah. pretty cute. And I don't have to feed it or yeah. watch it poop or anything. So, I have a question about the puppy. I would assume you can't see it unless you have like vision on crystal maiden it's kind of glitchy it does some i, I think i would be worried about it giving yeah me away. i think for the most part it's working correctly i think there were some glitches with it blocking some spawn um some spawn locations for some of the neutral creeps and stuff really mm -hmm. i wow. think the vision stuff from my understanding is working mostly as intended but uh, i think the the box for where that little puppy roams there's some issues there yeah so which i would think there's probably some people who would get bent out of shape about it which is fine. They'll figure him out. You just don't have to. You don't have to use it. I think. It, I think it's cool. Oh, think, it's it's really sharp. Looking. I like it. Yeah. And like the dog, like swims in the water when it's in the river. They did some great job. A really great yeah. job with some of the animations. You so. pick up the invis rune and it like it poofs, poofs away. Yeah, it's, it's great. great. It's really great. I agree, one hundred percent. Does it change the abilities on her at all? I think it does. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think you. Get I didn't really new... look at that too closely. I think it I changes it her ultimate i think i don't know about the other ones it probably changes at least that yeah, yeah. i think I, it changes the ultimate i haven't noticed that because i've usually been trying to click somewhere yeah. when it's going off but i would assume the like her q stays the same because of um that immortal that's out there her yeah crown or whatever so they could wear is. both you mean yeah yeah you might be right so i want to buy the. i want this thing ben i really want it i but yeah it's 28 bucks and a, that's at a discount at the discount right rate um crystal maiden's an awful hero at the moment so that's the okay ben if she okay. was if she was a good hero i might buy it really yeah wow well i don't have the money to buy it but if i had the money to buy it and she was a good hero yeah i would buy it wow this would be the one because this is this is my favorite arcana so far i like it i like crystal maiden and i have fun with her so i'm on the fence i don't think i'm gonna buy it are you are you considering it I'm still on the fence. Well, I if you're going to buy it, you should buy it sooner than later so you get no, your points for the year beast of mode that you're not going to play. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You do it. get item drops in the matches that you play with her in, I think. Yeah. Because the match that I played with the Arcana, yeah. like all this stuff dropped when I won. Here's the thing, Ben. When there's a Steam sale, I don't even buy video games for $28, Ben. I see a game for $20 and I go, that's too expensive. I'm waiting for the Steam sale. Well, that's true, but you know what? The last game that I bought for that much was I paid full price for Transistor when it came out, and I think it was like worth every penny, wasn't it? Twenty five bucks, worth every penny. Well, look at it as a celebration of the return of hats. You could look at the purchase as yeah. as celebrating that. I don't know. I maybe I need some more poking and prodding here. I've got money to spend. I've got money budgeted towards it. I like. I, I you actually to. think Crystal Maiden's a great hero too? I do. So if I was in yeah. your position, I would buy it. But she's a crappy hero, and I don't have money to spend on it, so I'm not. Okay. Well, we'll see. All right. Ben, uh, there was also a new hero released. I there was. Know, I don't know if you heard. I, well, yeah, I heard. Winter Wyvern. Winter Wyvern. Winter Wyvern. Okay. So that also brings us to uh, the hero of the week, so I'm just going to go ahead and play the bumper. Here we go. You're tough. See? See, Ben? Yeah, you clicked like four times. No, I double-clicked, and it stopped playing. Here we go. You're tougher than I thought. Hello. Have a cookie. Meepo. More meepo. I love you guys. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. People probably think we're married, Ben. Why would they think that? I feel like we fight like we're married people oh, sometimes. Well, yeah, we probably have That's moments. Fine. I think the problem is your mouse is the kind of the weight of a brick. It is, and I love it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's probably too heavy for you to like move and click at the same time. Yeah, I'll, I'll I got to figure out a new solution there. But just I think clicking correctly would be the best solution. Okay. But we can move on. Uh, in other in other news, noobs ask noobs. We have not won a match in a long time due to my clicking abilities. 
Uh, we just won a match the other day. Oh yeah, that's true. Quite decisively. But your cl- we we won in spite of your poor clicking. How about that? Okay, very good. Uh, so Ben, the hero of the week is Winter Wyvern, and uh, Winter Wyvern was also released with the current New Bloom patch. Correct. To much fanfare. Then, well, what was a lot of fanfare? Oh, they made a big deal about her being the, pa- released. the patch or yeah. her being released. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I thought they could have made a bigger deal about her. Yeah, I actually thought she was almost an afterthought of the patch. To be honest, really, she was like on day three. She was the first thing that you saw on day three. She was. Well, day one and two were like teasers. That's true. I don't know. I just I think that they could have. She was in the comic that you didn't read. I thought when I, I guess when I'm looking at the new bloom patch. The two things I think of are Crystal Maiden Arcana mm-hmm. and the Year Beast. Yeah. Because Winter Wyvern's not really a huge part of that Year Beast event, correct? No. Maybe part of the lore, but not part of what's going on. Yeah. So to me, she was an afterthought. The primary things are yeah. CM Arcana, Year Beast event. Okay. Yeah, that might be true. That might be fair. But regardless, she's a new hero that was released. This is still true. Yeah. <laughs> One of the out. last three remaining heroes... You got um, it. Until we have parody with the original Defense of the Ancients mod for Warcraft 3. Just Ark of the Warden and Pit Lord remain. Yes. And in the original Dota mod, Winter Wyvern was a man or a male dragon. And now she's female. I had no idea that the uh, we had a yeah. transgender S- same with Legion, dragon. Same with Legion Commander. Legion Commander was a dude in Dota 1. And now... Uh, Legion Commander's a lady. What's the lore reason for sex changes in the Dota universe? Do we know? I don't I don't believe that the lore from Dota 1 is the lore for Dota 2. So it's a creative artistic decision. Yeah. Okay. That's I think fine. I think the lore is entirely different from Dota 1. Okay. I don't even know if there was lore for Dota 1. I would assume there was, but you I would, would I would assume it's kind of this muddy Warcraft 3 thing that yeah. kind of has a little bit of I don't know. I'm guessing it's not yeah. good. We like Dota listeners. Let us know what the deal is with that. But I'm pretty sure that like the lore was just kind of rewritten for Dota 2. Okay. I think. I'll take it. Yeah, that's fine. Right. So anyway, Ben, uh, Winter Wyvern is a ranged intelligence hero who I guess is played in the support role generally. I would think so. I would think mostly a support, probably a number four position or a number five position. Yeah. I would think she does some damage. I would think a number four would be possible depending on what you're looking to do with her. But uh, I'm a, I'm a fan. I'll just go and say that so far, but I'll also say this. Nobody knows how to play her well yet. Yeah. The, the, the matches I'm in when I have one either on my team or against me, uh, people don't really know how to use her. Well, I saw somebody was trying to run her as like a number one carry. And yeah. that, that went real poorly. That was the match where we had winter wyvern buying like a mask of madness, all agility items. On yeah, Wyvern, what so. else? What else did she have? I don't even remember. I don't know, but yeah, she's she's best suited for a support. Valve has her kind of tagged that way when you're looking at suggested items, and I think that her abilities point towards that being the best fit as well. Yeah, um, but yeah. Anyway, let's uh, let's maybe let's maybe talk about her abilities, and let's then we do can it. talk about more how to play her. Yeah. Real quick, I pulled up that match with the Winter Wyvern. She had a Sanj and Yasha, a Mask of Madness, an Urn of Shadows. Arcane boots and a staff of wizardry. So that that match that we played with them, yeah. yeah. Who knows what was going on there? Okay. Anyway, so Arctic Burn is Winter Wyvern's Q. Winter Wyvern soars upon an Arctic wind, granting her un- unobstructed movement and allowing her to exhale a blistering chill into each attack. While soaring, her attacks travel further and faster and slow enemies with a burning freeze that strips them of 6% of their current health each second. Her sight is also hardened against Night's Chill, granting her 400 additional vision at night while soaring. I love the person who writes the ability descriptions. Yeah. It's so good. It's and vivid. I know exactly what's happening. Doesn't this thing just sound overpowered like from the get-go? I, I feel like if this was a, a paper and pencil you know rpg i would still know what that ability looked like it's great so this is something where you hit q and it affects your your right clicks so it's pure damage and movement so right clicks and movement and then also does some extra damage you get a variety of bonuses there's a lot yeah there's a lot there actually so you get an attack range bonus of 275 at level one all the way up to ben 575 at level four Mm mm-hmm an attack projectile speed bonus of 500 at all levels oh she starts hitting pretty fast 
Night vision bonus of 400 at all levels. Current health as damage per second is 6% at all levels. The move speed slow is level... Level 1 is 25%, all the way up to 40% at level 4. And the debuff duration for the slow and the DPS is 5 seconds. Or no, I'm sorry, the debuff duration for the move speed slow is 5 seconds. And the burn duration is 6 seconds. So that's the... Um, current health as damage per second. That ability brings a lot to the table. I think this is why people get confused and want to try to use her as a carry, maybe. Potentially, I could, yeah. I could see that being why people would try to do that. But I still think support is where she fits in. Yeah, I think so as well. I think you kind of draft her... Well, let's talk more about that as we talk about Yeah, go abilities. ahead. Okay. So the cooldown on this is 50 uh, seconds at level 1, 20 seconds at level 4. So, there you go. Uh, her W is Splinter Blast, launches a ball of brittle ice towards an enemy. The ice shatters upon impact, leaving the primary target completely unaffected, while her hurling damaging splinters into nearby enemies in a 500 radius. Enemies struck by these splinters are slowed by 25%. So she's doing a lot of damage, a lot of slows. And the thing that people are doing wrong with this is they're targeting the person that they want to slow. Which is dumb. Which does Cause, nothing. Because it says right there, primary target completely unaffected. So noobs such as us don't do that. Sorry for targeting the person I want to slow. Them. Yeah, don't Sorry don't yeah, don't target who you want to slow. So the cast range on this is twelve hundred. That's pretty good. That's a, yeah, all of her abilities she's she's got a really good range with most of her abilities. It's pretty nice. Uh the splinter search radius is five hundred, so it's the splinters will look for people to damage in that 500 radius from the initial target. Mm -hmm. The damage is 100 at level 1, uh, all the way up to 340 at level 4. Move speed slows 25%, and the slow duration is 4 seconds. So that's, uh, I mean, 340 damage, 340 AoE damage at level 4, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's that's a decent really ability good. with the yeah. slow and everything, yeah. Uh, her next ability is Cold Embrace. Oh, this thing's annoying. Uh, this is her E. Why is it annoying? Because I had allies casting this okay. on me at inopportune times. In cases, an ally in an icy cocoon, freezing them solid while healing a base amount as well as a percentage of their maximum health per second. The cocoon blocks all physical damage. This is an awesome ability. It's a great, great ability. But it's also one of the reasons that people who are playing this hero are screwing the heck out of it. Yes. They, they stop you as you're chasing heroes. They, they line you right up into a bunch of magic damage getting slammed. I mean, they just I they had, do really stupid things. I had someone cast this on me when I was trying to TP out, and it stopped me from right. getting back to base. Right. Because this is what I did, Ben. I, I double-clicked my thing to TP, or I hit my key twice to TP back to base. And I move my camera back to base, waiting to see myself in a second or two. And you never appeared. And I never appeared. I was like, what the heck happened? Yeah. And I see Winter Wyvern just smugly flying on by. But with an organized team, what a great ability. Right? Oh, yeah, hey, for sure. You know, save somebody, get them healed up, get them back yeah. in the game. I mean, that's great. Yeah. So the cast range on this, Ben, is 1,000. The base heal per second is 20. And the max health... Uh, as heal per second, that would be if I cast this on you. This is your maximum health right. as heal per second. Uh, three per second, at, three percent at level one, six percent at level four. Last for four seconds. Cooldown is seventeen seconds at level one, and it decreases by a second each time you level it up, down to fourteen seconds cooldown at level four. It's really nice, and you can cast it on yourself. Also, you cannot yeah. cast it on enemies. Yeah. So, so this is something where I can see this being used on like. Someone like an anti-mage comes to mind where like he can blink out really easy. So like if he's in a fight that breaks out and he's really damaged, he can blink out. Winter Wyvern can cast this to heal him up and then he can just blink back in and he's ready to go. Well, I think that and then also just if somebody's getting kind of focus fired down, yeah. you can save their life at the right at the last minute. And especially right. if you can put this on a carry who's down to 200 health, all of a sudden you've got a healed up carry coming back into a fight. Yeah. Right when you might need them, when instead of having a dead carry, I think it's a really oh yeah, it's kind of in some ways even better than than what Dazzle does in a, in a lot of ways with the Shadow Word. Um, yeah, it, it's different. You, you can't move, of course. You're not moving, but 
it has a different utility to it yeah than that which i think can be a real benefit yeah it doesn't block magical or pure damage though. it does not so yeah you can that. you can definitely just leave somebody in a worse position when they have yeah. a four staff or a blink da- dagger to get away and then all of a sudden you froze them there so they can get killed by some magic damage that's definitely a problem don't 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 put this in crystal maiden's alt don't <laughs> uh, you know there's there's all kinds of ways oh, that man. people can screw this up yeah. basically and and i've seen it all and i'm, I'm sure it's going to get even worse oh yeah so as more people wait. think that they know how to play the hero but i think it's a great ability it's really neat oh yeah so moving on to winter wyvern's uh ultimate uh her ultimate is called winter's curse Winter Wyvern freezes an enemy in place while striking those nearby with a maddening, maddening curse, which causes them to attack their frozen ally. So basically, you select somebody, and it causes everyone around them on their team to attack them. Correct. Yeah, it's it does have a pretty small radius. What was the radius? Like 350? Is that right? 350, yeah. 350. So it's not a huge radius. People who walk into it after it's been cast... Will can will also start attacking that. Oh, target. they will. They will. So it doesn't work like like a debuff or you, anything like you that. You can't. You cannot walk out of it. So if you walk out of it, well, you can't walk out of it. But let's say somebody got like four staffed away or something like that. Yeah. They will continue to attack the hero who was targeted. Yeah. And then if you walk into that area, you will also attack that hero that's been targeted. So this kind of works almost like Axe's Berserker's Call, except you can target it. Mm. You can target who you want Axe to be. Kind of. You mean in terms of it's kind of being in like a taunt yeah. in a way? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I think it's considered a, a taunt-like ability for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, I, I haven't seen anybody use this well, but it seems like it has a lot of really good uses. If you've got people it bunched does, up, yeah. you would want to use it on, I think, either somebody who has a really good ultimate disable, like maybe a Tidehunter or something like that, mm-hmm. or use it on a, a hard carry that you're wanting to take out of the match, or use it when somebody's standing next to yeah. Because the target also gets stunned. They do. They can't do anything else. Yeah. So use it to maybe somebody who's standing next to a hard carry so that the mm-hmm. hard carry just bursts somebody down. Yeah. And they're basically doing some damage for you for a while. Right. I think there's a lot of good options with that ability. The duration is 2.5 seconds at level 1, yeah. level 2, 2.75, and at level 3, it's 3 seconds. That's a good chunk of time. It's pretty good, yeah. Uh, level 1 has a cooldown of 90 seconds. That's not too bad. Level 2, 80 seconds, and level 3, 70 seconds. I think that's pretty good, and I could see some good synergy there with, I don't know, a black hole or uh, Magnus's ability yeah. or um, a dark seer, something like that. I think there's some some good kind of other abilities that you can mix this up with that you could really get some good damage coming in. Yeah, and you can... I feel like if you can set it up well and you can get a good Winter's Curse off, you can also get some good follow-up uh, spells on that as well. Well, you've got some good chase there as well with right. with her uh, her W ability. So it's yeah. I I like what she brings to the table. Yeah, but she is one of those heroes that you get nervous if somebody on your team picks them. Yeah, <laughs> right. So um, so Ben with Winter Wyvern, we kind of talked about it earlier. We're thinking you want to play her as like either a range support or maybe an ability based core potentially i haven't yeah i think it's a little too early to tell for sure i I would think support for sure it seems like the best fit i don't know if we'll find some situations where maybe she's run mid to get some of those abilities up a little Mm -hmm. faster i could see that being a potential possibility or or running as a number four like you said some sort of a farming support yeah Um, i don't think that she scales as well with items as our friend who wanted to run her as a carry thought right um, but I think levels seem like they could be pretty helpful on her. And I think, you know, she does have some good chase. So I think if yeah. you get some good utility items on her, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. I was just going to say, it definitely doesn't seem like you want to be running her as like a number five support, like a hard support. I, I think you could though. I don't think there's any reason not to. I think her yeah. abilities bring enough to the table to, to benefit yeah. from that too. So it seems like she really is starving for XP. Like she's, you're, you're going to want to get levels on her. I think you want to get some levels on her. I don't I don't think that's untrue. Yeah. But I think once you get that ultimate on her, her range is so good that I, I don't think that being under leveled is going to hurt her quite as much, if that makes sense, because I don't think she's going to be right in the heart of the battle all the right. time. Yeah. So I think she can get away with it. Yeah. She's, she, I think she's a more of a mid to late game. I think she, the, where she really seems to struggle, I think, is going to be that early game. Yeah. I don't know if she has quite enough early game, but if you can get her through that. 
it does seem like Winter Wyvern can go can go late. It seems like that uh, Winter's Curse could go late pretty well. Oh sure. I mean, if yeah. you think about it, if you can if you can get their carry hitting somebody, it doesn't matter how late it is, even if that carry is super farmed. In fact, it's a benefit to you at that point if that carry is super farmed. Yeah. And you take out another hero. Because it doesn't look like it doesn't look like it's blocked by BKB. It is not. It's not blocked by anything. A lot of her abilities go through spell immunity. Yeah. Arctic Burn does. Which which helps her scale late. Yeah. Arctic Burn does. Uh, Splinter Blast is magical damage. So. But that one's that one has some weird interactions because I think. I don't think it triggers L- Lincoln Sphere. For example, I don't think either part of it does. Dota 2 Wiki says Splinter Blast will still travel to secondary targets even if they are spell immune. But, but it does... won't do damage to them. Right. right. Or, or slow. Um, Cold Embrace, I mean, obviously that goes through. That's going to go through spell immunity. And Winter's Curse does as well. But yeah, it's Lincoln scales Sphere late. will block it, though. Well, it, do, it blocks. I think it blocks one of the parts of it, but not the other part of it. Mm, I'm not sure exactly how the interaction works. I'm not sure if it blocks yeah. the main projectile will trigger it, but maybe the splinters don't. I think there's some weird... No, no, no. Winter's Curse is oh, winter... blocked by Lincoln Sphere. Oh, the is ultimate. it? The ultimate, you... yeah. Well, only for the person it's cast on, correct? Well, right. That would stop the whole thing from But if you cast working. it on somebody else, I don't think Lincoln's prevents that person from attacking that other person. Oh, interesting. You wouldn't want to cast it hmm. on a person who has Lincoln's, is what I would say. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Uh, we'll have to see how those how that works out. There's some funky yeah. interactions here, but I yeah, think that's yeah. how it works. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it definitely seems like she's like kind of a ranged damage slash slowing support. Oh sure. You get a lot of benefit from her slows. I I just keep reading stuff about attack slows, movement speed slows. So many slows, and then she's really got, good team fight. Yeah. So there's that. Um, as far as recommended items go. I'm not sure what you would want. I would think you'd kind of. I think a mana boot for sure. Mana boot, maybe kind of almost build her like Jakiro in some regards, where maybe you want like a Yule Scepter. I think you could use Scythe of Ice, a Yule Scepter. Scythe of Ice would be great. Mechanism just to kind of continue that heal Mm -hmm. aspect that she has a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Her her E that heal has some interesting interaction possibilities. I think with a Soul Ring, either on herself to allow her to spam some other abilities. Okay. Yeah. Or I could see it working well with somebody else who's on your team where they can essentially grab their health, use it to do some abilities. You can use the heal so they can they can use yeah. the soul ring again. I can see that being kind of interesting too. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure. I'm trying to look what's rec- like what people are building according to Dota buff on her. So most used items on her are Mana Boot, Force Staff, Yules. Blink, of- Blink Dagger would be okay. Blink Dagger, yeah. yep, Urn of Shadows, Mech, Tranquil Boots, Soul Ring. So kind of stuff we already mentioned. Yeah, I think those all make sense. Yeah. It's, she seems like a hero that will do okay without items, but can use them to some regard in that it buffs up her mana pool a lot, and then, you know, the the other, other items are kind of secondary to that. Well, I think they're adding something else to your team. I don't think the, yeah. atoms are, the items are necessarily directly helping her out as much as they are. Right. Adding more control, adding more heals, yeah, that kind of thing, Mech which or, is great. Yeah, yeah, okay. So there you have it. There's Winter Wyvern. What do we What do we think about her? Well, I think just as a general scope of the character, I love the character design. I I really like that. Like, have you looked at the character model yeah. and stuff? Yeah, like, the character model is really cool. Yeah. Um, have you seen how she like stops flying when she's critically her low, low light her low HP. life animation yeah. is superb well, i think all like of her animations are around great. yeah her great. animations are fantastic i don't like the color scheme too much she's a little too glowy for me okay with the blue all right but for the most part i really like the model and the animations and pretty much everything about her i'm gonna say recommend okay very good um i'm also gonna give her a recommend so there you, there you have it okay wow and i'm surprised oh yeah well i'm excited for winter wyvern because she seems like a useful addition to any blue drafts we might do in the future <laughs> or dragon drafts i think or dragon dragon drafts. Dra- dragon drafts are a possibility who would you do with a dragon draft you'd have dragon knight we decided puck dragon knight puck. jakiro and then we're there's i think there's some winter other dragon wyvern. that we're forgetting about yeah 
There's got to be another dragon out there. Yeah. I don't know. We're just not thinking. Anywho. Uh, so there's Hero of the Week, folks. Let's uh, let's move on to the item of the week, Ben. And We're going to get rid of item of the week, Brian. I yep. think we've decided that we hate that and that it's just not very useful. And we'd rather just talk about the items in the first segment. Yeah. But as a teaser... Ooh, a little spoiler. teaser. We will be bringing a new segment to the show called Noob Knowledge. And that will be tips and tricks that we're learning, things about the game that maybe new players don't know. Um, and, and that may be something that's not, that some people know, but not everybody knows. Um, so that will be happening as soon as we learn something that's useful enough to share. So we will never have that segment it will it may be a while but eventually yeah. we'll have a okay. noob knowledge segment great i look forward to that ben and I look, yeah i look forward to not having item of the week i think that's a great decision and it's never i don't think it's ever been a really great great we, d- we just sit there and we're like well this is what it does that's fine this and is I, this is part of what we do as podcasters ben we we add stuff we see if it works we don't like it we get rid of it we do what we want that's exactly we right d- we do what we want ben. And, and if there's an item we want to talk about we can do that in noob knowledge that's right. There you go. There's nothing stopping us from doing that. There you go. All right. Let's let's uh, let's bring back our executive senior producer, Cheeks of Flappin', for a little segment called Chatting with Cheeks. Oh. See, there it goes again, Ben. How come when I click it, there's never any problems, Brian? Because I already clicked it for you. There we go. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the dense and impenetrable web of systemic bullshit we collectively refer to as Dota. Hey, <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and just throw VLC out the window for next week. I gotta find something else, Ben. Can you find it before we go and do the pre-show planning and everything? Yeah, I will. Okay, I'll, I'll do that for you, Ben. Please. Anyhow, yeah. thanks. Uh, Mr. Cheeks of Flapping, are you there? Yeah, I am right here. Hi. Unless you don't have me turned up. I do. We can hear you. Okay, well then, yes, I'm right here. <laughs> Good to be here. Yes. Back in the show. Uh, there's been lots of talk about Winter Wyvern, mostly Last Town and Bunny arguing about whether she's dumb or not. Oh, boy. Uh, in particular, the Cold Embrace ability. Oh, that thing. Well, uh, it's a good ability, but I feel like it just screws me over. It's just used poorly by people. Yeah, well, I think I think there's some some applicable situations. I was thinking it's sort of a uh, Legion dual counter. So if you can freeze the person who's stuck in the duel mm-hmm. with Legion, then if all the all her teammates are around, sort of helping her hit him, then you can cast the ult on Legion, and then also do the uh, ice splinter thing too. Yeah, I think, I think that's it a great could idea. be a pretty fun little little thing to do. But I don't know. I was also wondering if it would work on the on the Bane ult if you on could freeze the, the oh on the uh, oh. friends grip. Yes, friends grip right yeah. there. If you could cast it on the hero, if it would keep them alive enough. I would think it would, right? Oh, they're stuck in friends grip, maybe. Unless they become like magic immune during that time, which... Well, she can cast through magic immunity anyway, so I would think it would be fine. I think that's a great yes. idea. Fantastic idea. But there was, there was so much arguing about it that they were talking about having a stupid off to see who was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I love that idea. Yeah, I, I'm intrigued by what the stupid off was. There were no further details offered up. I'm but, I'm excited uh, about Winter Wyvern, but I have also been called stupid before, so there's that. So there we go. Yeah, I've I been called I stupid a lot while playing Dota. Dota. Uh, I've been let's called see, we've also we've also been talking about uh, I've been talking about how you were feeling, how you didn't know how you were feeling about Funic leaving Navi. Yeah, and I said that uh, I told everyone that you had feelings. I do have feelings. And that that those feelings were raw. And then true. Uh, there was talking when Ben was talking about hats again. People said Ben has hat feelings or Ben's <laughs> hat feelings. And so I made the hashtag Ben's hat feelings. But then it looks like Ben shat feelings. <laughs> which sounds which about right. Which is why everyone was like, well, that's why he's salty. He that just needs to express right. them instead of shatting them. He so, just needs to poop. Yeah. That's all he needs to do. Yeah, that's all he needs to do. Ben shat feelings. That's uh, great. What else have we been talking about? We talked a little bit earlier about... Uh, we all go to TI five and have a meetup. That whole uh, LARP, whole LARPing thing again. Yeah, hold on. Still bring that Spoiler up. alert! It's looking like we're going to be going to TI five. So I'm not, not making... as a team. Uh, that's pretty premature for an announcement, but most likely it is. It is mature. We're not, not as a team. 
Not as a team. Not as a team. No, yeah, as not a, as a uh, team. Oh, gosh. No. As a podcasting <laughs> team. Disclaimer. We're, we're bringing you the hard-hitting news. Not really as officially press, either. We're yeah. just going as well, fan, fans that happen to have a podcast, most likely. We, we're mm-hmm. going to try to get to go as press. It's probably not likely, but if anyone out there oh, has any on. connections, try we, help help us out, man. Help us out. Hook us up. Look in your direction, Diddy Mitch. She doesn't even work for the same company. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. He's in the industry, though. Yeah, He's in the industry. He's an industry friend. Yeah. Maybe Gabe listens to this to the show. If Gabe listens to the show, probably does. Hook us up, Gabe. I oh, that'd be great. If Gabe listens, oh my goodness. He might. He's you know what? He he uh, this is really off topic, but he there's some guy had some customer service issue and it wasn't getting solved. And he messaged Gabe and Gabe fixed it for him. What? Are I'm you not serious? Even, he, he said we're all customer service at Valve. Oh my gosh, that's there great! Go. This guy's just—he's a legend for a reason. Yeah. So anyway, we're all, all right. gonna try and get out to TI five. We're not super sure yet, but it's definitely starting to look that way. Um, so yeah, we're not entirely sure what we're gonna do out there. We're, we're definitely gonna podcast and do some videos. But I've beyond got some that, ideas. Yeah. But I, I would say it's premature enough that you shouldn't make plans just by the fact that we're going to be out there, which you probably shouldn't do anyways because you'll be sorely disappointed. You, should, you probably shouldn't make life plans around us anyway. No, I was going to... That no exactly. I mean, as you can see, if you <laughs> plan to listen to the show at 3.30, it's going to quickly become 6.30. <laughs> yeah. But if life we go out, hard. we'll do some sort of meetup and probably multiple yeah. meetups. Probably one. Uh, we could do two. So anyway, the, the talk of the LARPing uh, sort of uh, shifted to cosplay. And uh, let's see, who was what? it? Last town was saying that we should we should cosplay we should cosplay neutral creeps, team neutral creeps. Oh, so I could still be Roshan, and then I thought Ben could be the mud golem thing. Uh, you could be that guy with the whip, Brian, and then oh. uh, Jared could either be a harpy or <laughs> whatever that big bird thing is. Yeah, I think uh, the bird works for the, him. Is it a, isn't it like a wind ripper or? Something like Something that. Something wind wild know. wild wind wildling wild windling. Wait, why know. do I have Last to be the guy with the whip? Can I be the, the taskmaster that has the chalice? You are the taskmaster. That's what you do. Why do I have to be the mud golem? Well, no, I, no answer. I think that's I apparently that's for, obvious. <laughs> I think that's because speaks you're for bi- itself. you seem big. I'm, how tall are you, Ben? I am not much bigger than anybody than Jared. I think Jared and I are probably. Well, give me the a same height. height. Give me a height. I'm like give me a five eleven six foot something like that. Yeah. Okay, so then that's good. So you can be Mud Golem. Okay. And then I'm Roche because I'm the tallest. I'm like 6'3". You are? Really? Yes. I, I always assumed he was the tallest. Wow. So that's... Yeah. Okay, well, I'm glad I know that so that when we meet you <laughs> out on the West Coast, I'm not going to be alarmed by your height. He's so tall. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Is it going to bother you? No, it's not. I'm just glad that I know ahead of time. You seem a little I insecure. I just not show up. But... Were you hoping you weren't going to be the shortest anymore, Brian? Uh, No. I'm just asking. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine with my height. Anyway. But yeah. Anyway, I think if I think we should do one day in cosplay. Personally. Okay. Sure. I'm not gonna cosplay. I'm not cosplaying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. What else are we talking about? Uh, well, I guess that's pretty much it. Lots of talking. Lots of uh, dorking out about Dota, as we will do. That sounds about uh, right. So, are you guys ready for some questions? Let's do it. Oh boy, have I got some questions for you guys. Hit it! Holy shit! If you want peace, you must prepare for war. If you want war, you must also prepare for war. The lesson is, always prepare for war! Timely advice from our friend Axe. Right. Always prepare for battle. Is he still there? (laughs) Yeah, I'm still here. I was. I wasn't sure. I couldn't hear the bumper. So oh, sorry. I, was just I tried to cue you in for those, so but I, I, I do not. So that was Brian's fault, uh, apparently. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> EJ Salt. Anyway, we've got some questions here. We're going to start off with a question from Aloeve Wizard. Okay. A uh, friend of the show, Aloeve Wizard. Oh yeah, he not has sure a slash in that. it. Yeah, he's a. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's a Patreon patron. So oh, great. Thanks oh, for wonderful. supporting us. Yes. I believe yes, that the. Thank uh, you. At the five dollar month level, so thank you very much. Yeah, that's, that's Aloy pretty high. Wizard. Oh, and I'm going to mention this now. This week we're giving away a copy of the Just Cause collection in celebration of the new trailer for Just Cause Three that came out. Oh, that's so a, that's a fun series. That's a super yes. over the top open world game. So do you get two yes. games with that? Is that what's going on? 
One would think. With the collection, you get two uh, games? Yeah, I think so. Wow. Yeah, you get Just Cause and Just Cause 2. That's right. Value. And then plus all the DLC stuff, I think. Dang. That's, that's a good, good. At your home for free games. Wow. But uh, remember, you can only get games if you submit a question. It'll be put in the drawing for the uh, Noobs Ask News if you submit a question. So you don't, the, you don't have to we be We like here to live. Reddit. Yeah, not here live. But although I do give people an opportunity in the chat. Okay. We'll go over there and do it before we get to Noobs Ask Noobs. Very good. But anyway, so this is uh, Noobs Ask Noobs questions, uh, February, March, on the Reddit. Post your question there, and you'll be entered in the drawing for that week's game. we got a bunch of them coming up, guys, so keep putting those questions on there. So here we go. From Aloe Wizard. In light of the CM Puppy Arcana, which hero would you most like to see get a pet, and what would it be? Ooh, that's a good question. Mm. That's a great question. I can see a Baden getting a really cool pet. Really? Yeah. It would just be all dark and skeletony. Or yeah, that'd skeleton-y. be, that'd be cool. Know. Or what if it was like something like a cute kitten or something? I'd be okay with it if it was. Yeah. That's great. Who would I want to have a... Let me think about it here for a second, Cheeks. What if Beastmaster could summon a smaller version of Beastmaster, which summons smaller <laughs> versions of animals i wasn't initially on board with that but now i'm okay with it after you went all the way through the thought yeah yeah that's pretty good so you just have a zoo walking around with us yeah Yeah. i think i would like i think i would like kunkka to have some sort of like Mm. tide hunter baby or something that he's befriended Mm. just to take tide hunter off even more so it's like he has Tide Hunter's child. Stole one of Tide Hunter's yeah, children. Yeah, he stole one of Tide Hunter's children. And the Tide Hunter child is wearing like Kunkka's hat <laughs> and that kind of thing. Yeah. That sounds great. Ooh. That's what I would be into. Yes. Very interesting. Well, my, my thought on this is since we got such a big uh, nerf to the supports with the uh, whole changing courier morph thing, I think what you should be able to do is you should be able to buy a courier with an option that's a little bit less than a courier in the store. I mean, I'm talking about in the in-game store, you know, where you buy, like, your okay. tangos and everything. I think you should have an option to buy a pet that's your courier. So you could use whatever courier you wanted to be your little pet to follow you around during the game. Oh, I see. doesn't actually do anything. Does it carry items? No. Well, just... does a pet do anything? No. It just it just follows you around. It allows you to turn a courier into a cosmetic pet. I don't pet. know. Sometimes, you yeah. get, sometimes people get pets that go hunting with them or train you know they train people to to bite them now maybe i wasn't paying attention but what does the cm puppy do it just follows her around and it does yeah it has see, cool animation that's what it should do okay. when i'm playing yeah. my shadow shaman and i want my chicken courier just following me around so it it would literally be the game's most inefficient item yes okay i'm fine with that but you could totally buy it in game just because oh you mean buy in game with in game gold yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Not like with in with dollars. It's just like an option. It's like a slightly less, maybe like a hundred gold instead of 150 gold. For so you're, you're you're actually a proponent of having cosmetic items that people can spend money on instead of items that are useful. Is there that what we go? Is yes. that what I'm hearing? Completely inefficient, but completely cool. Can't you do that already? You could just buy. Well, it's a normal price courier, but you could just buy a normal price courier and have it follow you around. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's, that's it's true. Not the same. It's, Is the puppy uh, invincible? In the game, uh, yeah, can you oh, attack the yeah. puppy separately? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. see, then that's what it should, it should be. Your little courier guy, pet guy, should be invincible too. It's okay. it's the worst idea for a game item I've ever heard <laughs> that I want to be implemented. I, I would like I cosmetic pets. I'll give you that, but I don't think I want it that way. How would you that's want where it? I'm gonna. That's where I just want to be able to buy cosmetic pets. You can equip it on your loadout. I, yeah, I want it to be hero specific pets, or just give an option to equip your supports as a pet. No, oh, oh in the okay. Loadout. Wow. I'm okay I with mean, that. I mean, not your support. It's not your support to couriers. As a oh, okay. Party. I was going to say, yeah. dang. We could have a tiny I, lich following you no, around. No, I kind of like that one. Following you around. Talk, think, talk about supports getting nerfed. I think for yeah. heroes, I think that would be great for heroes that can make illusions. To... Who would that be good? Like a morphling? For a morphling, he could make one of one of his supports. I think that would be a great item. <laughs> Larry, I'm already getting pushed back from the... Yeah, people I mean, hate this. The chat. Oh, it's like, gold thing is stupid though, it, G. It's a horrible idea. <laughs> it, it is a bad idea. I know, but I like that you presented it, and you know, there's. 
And you know, well, as a support, yeah. I'm out here spending all this money on wards that people aren't using anyway. So why shouldn't I throw some yeah. away on a little? There you go. Call me wow. You might as well have some fun. Cheeks is just betting today. Exactly. This is all this is is a betting session. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what else do you got for us, buddy? All right, a uh, friend of the show, Prairie Penguin, asks, "What hero, when they're selected by the other team, makes you cringe the most?" Mine is Huskar, is what Perry Penguin says. Oh, wait, when when the hero's on your team or on the other team? The other team. Oh, what hero, when they are selected by the other team, makes you cringe? Oh, the most? I get fired up when the other team selects Huskar because that means we're gonna win. No, he's saying which which do you not want to see? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I already know Ben's answer. Oh, what do you think? Crystal Maiden. No, I was going to say Axe. I would love the other team to have a Crystal Maiden because she's worthless. Yeah. That's fine. Other team can pick Crystal Maiden. That's just like, hey, oh, free kills. No, I, okay, I had it, I had it backwards. I'm yeah, sorry. I think Axe yeah. is just such a pain to pick. I just don't like that he changes how much, how, how I have to play the game. Mm. And that's annoying. I know he's not like particularly that fantastic or anything. Yeah. But he's just annoying to play against. Hmm. So I would say an Axe. It usually winds up being these kind of flavor of the month heroes that I. Which he's there right now. Towards. Yeah. In the past, I mm -hmm. would have said Juggernaut, but that's not true anymore because now I feel like I can just pick Doom and counter him pretty easily. Well, plus he's been nerfed. Yeah. In the past, I would have said Faceless Void because that guy's annoying. Um, we had a moment where we didn't like Witch Doctor for a bit. Yeah, that was pretty rough. <laughs> I think I would go with Phantom Lancer. He's annoying to deal with. Even with the rework, you think? He's that bad? Oh, yeah. I okay. think so. All right. Yeah. He's annoying. Um, I mean, we, we've we had many games against him that we have lost. We also had a streak where we had like six games in a row that we had Meepos on the other team. Remember yeah, that? That was just yeah. weird. But we, I don't remember feeling like particularly frustrated. I think by we that, won though. every game, but we're just like, what the heck is with yeah. all the Meepos? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with Phantom Lancer, even That's though I, I don't feel super strongly about that. I feel like he's manageable. I don't have a strong hatred towards anybody at the moment. Yeah. Usually I, I do. Don't either. I don't either. Ask us, again, ask us this question again in a month and we'll see where we're at. I think maybe <laughs> if it you're changes. going for a particular strategy, maybe split pushing. Because I think split pushing is easy to execute. but And it's not too bad to defend against. But you have to defend against it well. You have to execute your defense well to win against it. Okay. I see where you're going with if that. If you don't react correctly to it, right. you get destroyed by it quite easily so there's that that's our answer yeah what about you cheeks uh i i don't know i mean i've got a couple it's yeah i mean sometimes invoker you know just because i'm like oh great mm. there's some hot shot you know it's coming through and it's gonna <laughs> make make stuff hard make yeah. stuff a little bit difficult uh silencer sometimes when we're playing a team game because i'm just like oh crap they've got a big play here. i read an <laughs> article on, i read an article on uh on pc gamer about how they it sounded like they were raging against silencer they called silencer they went as far to call silencer a design problem because wow. the argument is is that the silence stops fun <laughs> which is kind of true. Silence is the fun. Well, there's some truth to that. But it's really fun to play as Silencer, I think. I like playing as Silencer. I feel like he brings value to the team and he helps you win, and winning is fun. But he's not fun when he's on the other team. No. So I'll give you that. But, I mean, you could say that about a lot of heroes. Well, that's the question. Like a juggernaut omni slashing you to death. That's not fun. The question is who do we not want to play against? Yeah, that was the question. I know. I'm just going off on a tangent. I liked your tangent. Also, a razor. Okay. Razor yeah. makes me cringe a little bit too. Haven't seen makes razor my butt a, lot, pucker. Not a whole lot. No. Makes your butt pucker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a pretty so strong like, oh. feeling. Yeah, it's you know how it is. Yeah. Oh, I, you, you see something or hear I about know. something that's painful, your butt sort of clenches a little bit. Oh yeah. Yeah. Totally. Okay. All right. Uh, last question for this week comes from friend of the show, Louise, 1972. Ah, uh, yes. I think we've talked about all him right. before, yeah. He's got an honest question. So here, here we go. As opposed to all these question. dishonest questions we had. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. He says, honest question. Is it possible to get really good at Dota without watching slash knowing anything about the pro scene? I got into it when I found out I could bet hats on them. One of my first rares betting on Jimmy standing in for Fnatic. Lol. <laughs> uh, I really enjoy the competition, but I really did not anticipate from the beginning how much it would teach me about the game. I thought at first that it would be kind of like StarCraft, where the best players just have superior APM and mechanical skills, 
than you can ever have. Uh, here, there is an aspect of high mechanical precision that most people can never have, but a large portion of pro games involve meta knowledge that really translates well into pubbing, in, in my opinion. I wonder if it's possible to get a high MMR without paying attention to the pros. Uh, I guess it depends so, on your definition of high MMR and high or, or, or high skill level play. I guess it depends on what you're defining that as. But um, I would say yes that you can be that great. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I suppose so. I mean, I guess I, I would think that you can. I, I would let me say this. I think it's going to take you longer to get to that point. Because you have to learn by essentially analyzing your own play and gradually going up the scale until you yeah. see what other people are doing against you and learning from them. Yeah. Versus when you're watching the pro game, you're watching people who have already figured something out play the game. Yeah. And you can kind of gain some knowledge that way. So I, I think you could do it by watching replays. You could gradually move up the line. But yeah. Mm -hmm. I think if you're looking for an efficient way to get better at the game, then watching the pros is a great way to learn some tips and tricks. Yeah, you can swing yeah, too totally. far with that, though, in my opinion. Like, Oh, sure. You can try to do things that you're just not ready to do yeah, yet. You, you need to play the game to get better at it. And I highly believe that watching competitive matches help you out with that. But I think you can also just get better at the game, just as Ben described. So, Well, I think Jared, if he was here, he would say... I know a lot about the pro Dota scene mm -hmm. and I know a lot about what works and what doesn't work within that scene. He has a lot of meta knowledge, but he would also say that he's really bad at pulling any of it off. Yeah. And he doesn't play as much. Yeah. The, uh, the actual like mechanical aspects of the game. That's where he would probably say he's falling short. Yeah. So I think he would admit that. I don't think I'm saying anything. He wouldn't yeah, say himself. No, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I think it's a combination for sure. But yeah, you could go too far on that for sure. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully that answers your question. I think one of the best ways to learn is listening to podcasts like the We Like Dota podcast. Oh, uh, I don't know about that. Well, Maybe I think other. Dota yeah, I was going to say other other podcasts with educational value <laughs> might be somewhat helpful. We like well, to have something fun. To be said for for success <laughs> and failure, you learn stuff. The you internet's most a lot of fun stuff Dota Two podcast. Yeah, ho hopefully people can learn from our mistakes. <laughs> exactly that, there is some truth there i think exactly all right so i'm going to put the names in the hat here and i'm going to draw yeah. the uh, winner of i'm excited for this one the just cause collection in honor of the just cause three trailer coming out here we go going in the hats we still don't have a sound effect for drum roll or anything do we no, uh no I'll but i have that. a uh, congratulations sound effect okay great great it's here ready we go. to go so i'm pulling it in and pulling it out the winner this week is Aloy of Wizard. Okay. Congratulations. Jackpot. Well done. Well done with the question. Nice job. And that was with the uh, the pet question. That was my favorite question. It was a fun question. It was my favorite one. I'm going to judge them, and that was my the one I liked the most. <laughs> All right. So Aloy of Wizard, I'm going to reply on your question on Reddit. And then you can uh, need to friend me on Steam, and then I'll get the game to you. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right. So I think that brings us to the end of the program. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, ben, where can we find you online as we wrap up the show? I am at Dota Yadneb on mm -hmm. Twitter and various other places on the Internet. Which I believe I saw you last week just hijacking uh, trending Twitter hashtags and starting Dota discussions based I don't, on those. Yeah, I don't know if I, like I know that. what I'm doing well enough to know that I was hijacking things. I think that's wow. great. Just keep going with it, Ben. Whatever I was doing was working? It was great. Okay. Yeah. Because I, <laughs> I don't understand Twitter yeah. very well. Yeah, you can follow uh, you can follow me personally on Twitter at Byinger, B-Y-I-N-G-E-R. Uh, also on Instagram under the same handle as well. Uh, Cheeks, what about you? You can find me on Twitter at Cheeks of Flappin, where I'll post things occasionally. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram, Cheeks of Flappin. Put some art stuff up there now and then. And I guess that's everything. Right? Okay, very good. Yeah. Uh, follow the show's Twitter account at We Like Dota. We're also on Reddit, Twitch, and YouTube. You can uh, also find us on the Steam Guild. As well as yes. the Steam, the Dota 2, group. There's the a Dota group 2, and a guild. Yeah, the Dota Two Guild and the Steam Group. 
Correct. Informa- Two different things, apparently. Information for both are on uh, on our Reddit page. And yeah, check out the subreddit. Been a lot of great discussions going on there lately and just great conversations happening there. Yeah, our, our Reddit's been very active. Mm-hmm. Uh, you showed me how to use that. That was good. Yeah. And then uh, I think we've actually had some comments on the Steam group, which we never check, but we're going to yeah. start checking now that people have come and commenting on there. And then yeah, uh, some interesting conversations on Twitter, too. So it's been a fun week yep. with We Look Dota. And uh, oh, post those post those reviews on iTunes, too, I think. I don't know. I always hear your other podcasts. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know how to get access to those reviews. I don't, I don't think people use iTunes for podcasts quite as much. as I think they people used to. do, Probably and they not. use they do use YouTube, which we need to make sure we get up on YouTube again. Yeah, they, I've had some issues with the videos in the past, but we we'll, do we'll we, get have, we have people there. like like yeah. to use the YouTube too. Yeah. So we'll try to get back up on uh, up, up on YouTube to have you guys watch there. Get on well. the up and up. Yeah. So Brian, up what up you're saying up. is, if we had more patrons, then you wouldn't have to use open source free broadcasting video program. <laughs> That's correct. That's right. Be able to broadcast the video, which then could easily more easily be put on YouTube. Right, as Cheeks is alluding to, we are on Patreon. Check us out at patreoncom slash like Dota. And support us with whatever amount you want to give to us on a monthly basis. Anywhere from one dollar to a million. A million dollars a month. So there so you go. So we can quit our jobs and just do this. That'd be great. That'd be, great. be pretty fun. I would consider yeah. it. Um, let's see, what else? Uh Wednesday nights are community nights, so people from the 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 guild get together and play some matches and have some fun and all that. Um, I haven't been there lately because uh Wednesday nights are the new date night with my wife and I, so we try to do that. It's a bad. It seems like you double booked yourself. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it seems fine. like an ill-advised yeah. situation. Uh, and then Friday night are tryhard nights for teams, like noobs ask noobs. So we do our five stack. <laughs> we try five stack tryhard. We and do. Tr- usually, we try really hard. There's usually people looking for games. I'll pop on yeah. frequently. Yeah, I think Bunny one, runs like an unofficial secondary community night on Fridays as well. It's, yeah, there's tend yeah. to be some lobbies up. Bunny, the uh, the show's admin, admin of the people. Yeah, that's what I refer to. Him as. He seems like yeah. a nice guy. Yeah. So anyway, uh, thanks for listening, everybody, and uh, we'll we'll see you next week.